Oh, it's working. So we're starting chapter two today, and the first part is on derivatives. So I'm going to simplify. Don't worry. All right. So we're looking at um, derivatives, and derivatives are tangent lines. And I'm going to give you an example of a linear function that has the same slope. So before I even do, let's go ahead and read this to each other. Everybody read. Not everybody read. Great, let's read out loud for me. Go. A linear function. So we have linear versus nonlinear, and I'm going to summarize it by the following. Give me a straight line. For the long nonlinear, give me any curved line wherever you want. So linear basically means no matter at what point I stand at, I am going to have the exact same slope no matter what. Is everyone good on that? So there's a translation. The second part. For my nonlinear, meaning a lot uh, a graph that's got no straight lines all the way through, as inconsistent. If we're looking at this, do I have the same slope no matter what? No, it's going to change. Sometimes it could be the, the same. That's all that this is trying to tell us. Is everyone good with that? Now, specifically, a tangent line looks like the following. If you want to make a long wave wherever you want, go for it. And I'm going to pick one point. If I make a line through that one specific point, that's called a tangent line. And in calculus, tangent line is also called the slope. So when you guys back in Algebra 1 were doing find the slope, you were really looking for the, the tangent line, and that's it. Okay? So today might sound a little bit like Algebra 1, so bear with me. All right. Anyone remember what this line is called when we are passing through two points in geometry? Array. Array, okay, kind of. It's called the secant line. And it's secant because it's passing through two points. Now, I want to add on to this graph just because I don't want to graph more than one thing into, into one um, big graph. So I'm going to make another one. And maybe one just like it. It might not be exactly the same. I hope I'm recording. Oh, yes, I am. So if the secant line is through two points, we know our tangent line is through how many? One point. And it might not be perfect. Tangent line. So I'm going to elaborate on what's happening to our secant line first. So bear with me. If I call this point X, and I tell you the distance between the two horizontal pieces are the H, how would I write the expression of the second point right here? Something plus something. X plus H. Because we've gone this far and that much further. And then for the Y value, let's make our dotted line. And it's okay if it's not all the way straight. So the first one is the y value called the f of x. Second one is called the y value called f of x plus h. So if I am telling you the tangent line is basically the slope. You guys remember the slope formula? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So here I go. Let's all write out something. m is equal to. My y2 is this guy right here, f of x plus h minus the y1 is this guy right here, which, which is f of x, over x2 minus x1. Here's my x2, and there's my x1. And I want you guys to notice something. What is going to be a zero pair for me to eliminate on my denominator? The x is positive and the x is also negative. So here is our definition of our tangent line. Our tangent line is going to be 
the y2, which is f of x plus h, minus the y1 over the h. So time to add on to our card. So if you would, not really add on to, I am going to call this card number two. If you're using the corner of your paper, nothing wrong with it. So I'm going to summarize my tangent line right here real quick. Let's also go ahead and call this chapter two. I'm also going to write the formal word derivative. And derivative is the slope of a tangent line. Nope, oh, I don't have enough room, so I'm going to go down here. Let's start by modeling what the picture looks like. Because I think without a picture, it's hard to tell. Any curve you want, pick any point on the line and make a line going through just that one point. And this is called a tangent line. And the tangent line only goes through one point. So because a tangent line is getting closer and closer and closer to where h is getting closer to nothing, here's what we call the following. The slope is denoted with the prime, and the prime is our apostrophe. So the limit as h approaches a zero, meaning we have not two points, but one point of y2 minus y1, and I'm going to write that in the calculus form of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So the whole reason of me writing everything on the front page is just to kind of prove that, and that's it. So if all that didn't make sense, at least have this down. All right. So let's go ahead and write something on here. If I'm asking you for a tangent line, it's called instantaneous rate of change. Let's write out instantaneous. Insta Instantaneous, hopefully I'm not spelling it wrong, rate of change. And you'll see in AP, we'll use IROC as our abbreviation. And it's instantaneous because it's only going through one point at that specific instantaneous moment. Now let's add on to our secant line. For secant line, we're actually going through two points. So that's going to be the average rate of change. Average rate of change. You guys see how fancy I got there? And we're going to use the um, acronym called the AROC. So when I say AROC, it's through two points. When I say IROC, it's through one point. And two points is with the secant line, and one point is going to be with a tangent line. So let's actually apply this on the back. Is everyone good with this card? Yes? All right. Let's go on to the back. And I want to start by making a random wave, because why not? So somewhere on the margin, on the top somewhere, go ahead and make a random wave. How many? I really don't care. And let's analyze everything. Would you agree the slope between these two basically are, is a negative? Yes. Okay. The slope between these two basically is positive. Between these two is negative. And then I have positive. So then here's our golden question. When the slope is going from positive to negative or negative to positive, what do you think our slope is going to be? What number is always between a positive and a negative number, no matter what? Zero. The slope is always zero when you are changing directions. And later on, we're going to get to the point where it's going to be undefined at some point. That we'll deal with later. But for a well-behaved graph, from positive to negative or negative to positive, it's always going to be zero. So let's actually do an example. So on our example, we have... The derivative is given by, let's write our formula. So our formula here is going to give us, and I'm only writing the card back down. The limit, I wrote x, I should write h. Let me change that. The limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. 
And that is a formula we are going to use on every single one of them. Stacking pre-cal, do y'all remember doing this piece right here? Where H is eventually crossed out, yeah? The whole reason of doing that was just for calculus. We kind of snuck it in here. All right, so let's look at a common term. On our common term, differentiable means the derivative exists. So differentiate means derivative does exist. exist. So let's write out something. If I ask you on your test or quiz, and I say the direction is differentiate, that means find the derivative. And there's an easy way to find the derivative that I'm not gonna teach you today, and then I will sometime this week to make it super easy, but not at the moment, because I want you guys to get the logistic behind it. All right, so Y prime, this little apostrophe is called a prime. That denotes my derivative. And some of you guys might be like, well, can I say f prime? Definitely. What I like is f prime of x. This I will use at all times. Now, another form that they'll use if you were to read a calculus textbook, even though we're not really reading it in this class, is dy over dx. And also we have d of f of x over dx. And if you're thinking, why is the second form a lot more complex? Do y'all remember back in Algebra 1, f of x denoted y? Yeah, okay? It's just making it longer, but not really that complex. So let's actually do an example. Can you guys all see this from the back, or should I zoom in? Y'all good? All right. Let's start by writing out the equation of our tangent line. So we have or the slope, f of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of the function f of x plus h minus f of x over the edge. If you write this every single time, I think naturally you'll end up memorizing it. All right, in case you might have forgotten pre-cal, here's what we did. The first portion was we took all of the x and simply plugged in x plus h. So let's go ahead and do that. So f prime of x is equal to, leave the limit as it is. So from my function, I have x plus h all squared. And then I see a plus. What number do I see before the parentheses? Three. And then I see x plus h minus a one. The next piece then says, well, just take the whole function, which I have as it is, and copy it. But when I do, because of my minus, I need to put that in parentheses. x squared plus 3x minus the 1, all divided by h. And I'm going to give you a heads up. Once we're done with this whole thing, if the h's do not cancel, you've done something wrong. So let's start with this guy. How would I simplify that? Can I write x squared plus h squared? Nope, this is happening twice. There you go, we have x squared plus 2xh plus the h squared, very well. So let's go ahead and write that out. And yes, write out the limit every single time since we did not plug anything in yet. So x squared plus 2xh plus, plus x, h squared, it's like tongue twister, and then distribute the 3, 3x plus 3h. I'm going to leave the minus 1. Let's distribute the negative all the way across. It's all about keeping up with your negative and positives, I think, and all over h. Now, a lot of things are going to cancel. And just in case you're thinking, how do I know I've done the right thing? Your last three component will always, always cancel. Let's see if that is true. What does negative x squared cancel with? x squared, okay, that's one down. What does negative 3x cancel with? Positive 3x. And then how about the one? Negative one. So at some point, if your last three items doesn't cancel out, you've done something wrong. So let's write out what we have remaining. I have remaining limit as h, h approaches a zero. And yes, I'm gonna write out the tedious part the remaining. I will skip a step 
but I don't want to lose anybody, so I'm going to leave it right there. All right. What can I factor on my numerator right now? The H. So let's go ahead and factor it out as I wrote the X. should be H. So take out the H. 2X plus H plus 3 all over the H. And what did I tell you guys at the very beginning? Something should do what? Did it el eliminate? Yes, it did. So that means now I can plug in the 0 into our H. And when I do, I have our tangent function. So we know our equation is going to be 2x plus h. Oh, not h, 3. So let's write something on the side here. This right here is f prime of x, which is our slope function. What's up? Why did you get rid of the other h? Because it is approaching 0. So when I plug in 0, it means nothing to us. Okay. All right, so then let's answer what these basically mean, and I'm going to show you guys a graphical thing so you all can see what is actually happening here. So our first part, part B, E, and let's read. Okay, so it says to find the slope. Don't we already have our slope function right here? So we're going to plug it in. Two times the negative one plus three. And that is going to give us what number? One. That is our slope. Karis. Um, on the last step, I eliminate these two. And then what I did was I plugged in zero into this H. Right here. What about this one? I factored out the H. Between this set, this, and then my third, I took out the H. So let's see what this basically means. Make a graph if you would. And if you were to graph this accurately, it's going to go through negative 1. Uh, you know, I'm trying. Negative 1. And the following is what's represented. When x equals negative 1. So when x equals negative 1, our slope at this point Slope is equal to 1. And I didn't graph this really accurately, but if you were to go ahead and graph this accurately, it will. What do you think is going to happen if I plug in like negative 3? The slope is going to be negative. Okay? All right. The next info, the equation of a tangent line is very important. You will see this on the AP test at least once. Put a big fat start. Meaning I will test you on this pretty often as much as I need to. So here I go. So for equation of a tangent line, here's two things you need. You need a point. You also need a slope. Did we already find a slope? At x equals negative 1, what was our slope? OK, and then we know the x coordinate is negative 1. Could I now plug it back into my original function to find out what is the y coordinate? Yes, I can. So for the original function, we have f of negative 1 is equal to, we have negative 1 all squared plus 3 times negative 1 uh, minus a 1. And that's going to give us what number? Mm, negative 3. So we know the y coordinate is negative 3. It came from the given. Okay. All right, so let's kind of think about Algebra 1. When your teacher gave you a slope and a point, what was the formula called? Point slope. point slope formula. Very good. So it was y minus y1 is equal to what? M times x minus x1. And yes, these formulas should be memorized. So we have y minus a negative 3 is plus 3. Our slope is 1. My x is x plus a negative, so x plus 1. If this were to be a free response, you can stop right here because simplifying does you no good. But if this were to be a multiple choice, you go all the way and solve for y equals, and that's what I'm expecting. Don't care about d. So again, when finding the derivative, you're really finding the slope of the function. 
Is everyone okay with that? That's all you need. So let's go on to the back. And it's a back to last page before 2.1B. Yeah? Let me double check. Yep. So last page, and then we'll move on to our assessment. Okay, go ahead and write our um, derivative definition right up on the top. You don't need it. If you really want it, I'll give it to you, but you don't need it. All right. So let's go ahead and practice. Go ahead and plug in x plus h into the function and leave the f of x with the parentheses and go as far as you can and see if the three components um, cancel out and at the very end, see if the h's cancel out. Working together. Mm -hmm. Because that, that's our definition of derivative. And if you need a starting point, you can look up at the board. Make sure your last item eliminates. Bless you. Mm-hmm. Can someone erase that zip code on the side? It's interrupting my uh, view. Anybody? Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and plug in for part B. It says to find the slope. So given the fact that we found the slope function, all we need to do is plug in the values of that x at that specific location for all of them. Mm -hmm. Two times zero. Okay, I'm going to try to graph this even though it's not gonna look all that great. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm going to reiterate just one part of it. When x equals, oh, that's a negative. When x equals 1 with the positive, do you see it's going to be a positive slope? Pretty steep. Is 4 a pretty steep slope? Yes, it is. So at x equals 1, our slope is equal to 4. If you were to have calculated any number on the negative 2 and so on, it's going to give you a negative slope. So I'm going to move on to part C for time's sake, okay? So part C says, what is f of 1? And it wants us to write the equation of a tangent line. So let's go to write out f of 1. Now for f of 1, are we plugging this into the prime or the non-prime? Does it have the apostrophe? No, go back to the original. The original function on number 2a sets 1 all squared plus 2 times 1 plus 5, and that's going to give us a value of 8. So that means our point is located at 1, 8, and our slope that we found in the previous problem, f of 1, was at 4. So again, let's do point-slope formula. If only Algebra 1 kids knew they were secretly doing calculus, right? So we have y minus, the y1 is 8, slope is 4, x minus the 1. And again, if this were to be a free response, can I stop right here? Yes, you can. If it's a multiple choice, you go all the way through, and hopefully we can all solve for y. So it really depends on what the format of your question is going to be. All right, on part D, where am I plugging in, in the five um, from? To the original or the slope function? To the slope. So we have five is equal to two X plus two. And when, if you were to go all the way, X equals one half. And our sentence for this is at X equals one half, our slope is five. And again, one half is about here. The slope is still pretty steep. All right. Is that three half? Oh, that is so sad. Three half. Thank you. I was testing you. You passed. <laughs> All right, last one. If the tangent line is horizontal, horizontal lines have what kind of slope? Zero. So if I go ahead and plug that in, zero is equal to our tangent function. So we know x is going to equal negative one. Did I mess up on this one? Minus two divided by two, okay. So this means at x equals negative one, our slope is zero that I wanna see on our graph. Look at our graph. At x equals negative 1, is it really a horizontal tangency? Yep. Or if you want to say it's going from negative to positive or positive to negative, that is also going to work out. 